Whether you're ready for it or not, we are all entering our AI era. I have watched a few videos this week on the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet update. What I thought I would do is take it for a test drive live recorded. For the new product we're building, I want to build a notification system using Slack. Now building out Slack integrations is not something I do every day. And I thought that that would be a good opportunity to test out Claude. In fact, I really want to push it to its limits and tell Claude exactly what I want to do, how I want it to behave, what commands I want available, and see what it can come up with. Now, I've never used Claude before, so this is really truly going to be a first drive here. In fact, I don't even have an account, so let me start there. Now we're cooking. Hello, I'm Claude. Let me make this bigger for you. Hello, I'm Claude. I'm a next generation AI assistant built for work and trained to be safe accurate and secure. I'd love for us to get to know each other a bit better. Nice to meet you. I'm, enter your full name, but you can call me Kevin. Okay, great. Lovely to meet you, Kevin. A few things to know before we get started working together. Okay. Don't worry, I reviewed them thoroughly. All right, so I can see that I'm on Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Get little ideas down here using limited free plan. Okay, crack your knuckle. This is where we've got to describe in depth what we're doing. Here we go. Okay, so I've written my first prompt. I really have no idea what's going to happen here, but I've just told it that I'm building an issue tracker app. I want to use Slack to send notifications. I need a few Slack commands such as login and log out to link a person's Slack account with their account in my app called Baton. And then when we want to use Slack for notifications. So when an issue is ready for someone, when you've been at mentioned in a comment, or when a new comment has been made on an issue you are subscribed to. And I'm just generally saying provide all the code I would need to build this integration. This should be written in TypeScript. So I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to have to refine this further, but I want to see where this gets started. So let's try it out. So interesting, I expected this to use the artifacts feature over on the right hand side. I don't know why it's not using that, but let's see what it did. Okay, so it picked up that it probably wants to use the Slack Bolt framework, which is Slack's framework for developing Slack integrations. So that's good. It's starting an express app and using that to link up with Bolt, okay. It's building the command login, okay? So as soon as someone issues the command login, it will insert into user Slack links, okay? Let's continue on and see what it's done for notifications. Ah, okay, so this is very interesting. This is kind of what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to develop an API that I could call to or at least a set of functions that I could call to that would send out these notifications. So what it's done is it's created a few different functions, send ready notification, send mention notification, and send comment notification. And that's it. Okay, so that's good. So let's take a look at uh, send ready notification. This, okay, I can't make this any wider. Uh, so send ready notification, you pass to it a user ID, an issue ID, and a stage name, which is very specific to our app. And I did describe in the prompt what stages are, so that's that's good. But a stage is essentially a workflow step within an issue. So what it's doing is pulling from our user Slack links table, which it invented, and it's finding, based upon our own internal user ID, what is the Slack user ID and Slack team ID. So it has a lot of knowledge here about what is necessary for Slack integration. If it found a result, it uses the first row and it uses uh, Slack to post a message. It looks like a DM to that Slack user. An issue is ready for your attention. Issue ID, stage name is ready for work. Doesn't include, doesn't attempt to include any sort of link in here or attempt to style these notifications or not. So I have a few ideas of what we could do next, but let's breeze through the other two notifications. Okay, so we have a send mention notification. Very similar thing, looks up the Slack user, uh, posts a message to their DM, looks great. Similar thing here, send comment notification. Okay, finally, let's set up the express routes to trigger these notifications. Okay, so this is interesting. 
it is creating reaction. Hold on, let me turn those off. How do I turn those off? So this is interesting. It's actually creating an HTTP API that I could use internally as a service and call to in order to send these notifications. So I could have two different backends here, which is actually what I'm doing in this app. I could have my Next.js backend, which is the app itself. And then I could have a separate app, separate node app, specifically running this Slack integration that has these internal HTTP endpoints internal to my infrastructure that my Next.js backend could call in order to send over notifications. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm pretty impressed so far. It has created a database schema for me. It has used Express. It has used Bolt. It has created a simple API for me. Pretty nice start here. Let's refine this a little further. Specifically, I want these notifications. Because this is Slack, we can do all sorts of things here. So say, for instance, if an issue becomes ready for someone to work on, I want to give them a button that says, mark as in progress. So a user within Slack, without having to go separately to our app, click on a web link or anything like that, could click on a button to mark it as in progress. So let's ask it to do that specifically and see what it does. Okay, so I'm simply asking for the ready notification, a button in the Slack message, mark as in progress, that the user can click to mark that stage within the issue as in progress. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's modifying the function here and it's doing what it should do. So it's utilizing the Slack blocks feature. Blocks kind of Slack's way of creating rich messages, structured messages that maybe have some markdown, have some buttons, have some images, things like that. And so first it's starting with, okay, a markdown section and issues ready for your attention, blah, 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 blah. And then it's added an actions section with one button, mark is in progress, gives it an action ID, and the value it's passing, the issue ID, the stage ID, and the user ID. So it's passing everything that a receiver of this button would need in order to respond to it. And then it follows up with even implementing that button. So app.action, mark in progress. It's finding all of the parameters. It's assuming there might be a table called issue stages. Whether that's there or not, it at least gives me, the developer, a boilerplate to start with. And we can e it even responds back to the user. So stage blah, 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 and issue blah has been marked as in progress. You might want to update the original message to remove the button. This requires storing the original message's timestamp somewhere. So I've done this before, building a Slack integration. I've, I've built Slack integrations like this before. It's just not something I do very often, so it's not at the top of mind. But the messages timestamp within Slack is one of their main identifiers, if not the main identifier of the message. And if you want to update it, then you have to have that in order to update the original message. So let's say I did want to update the original message. Let's just take its own suggestion and feed it back. Oh, before I get too crazy here, a few things to note. Make sure your Slack app has the necessary permissions to send interactive messages. You might need to add chat write and I am right scopes. Cool. You'll need to set up your Slack app to use interactivity, add the request URL, great. This code assumes you have an issue stages table in your database, adjust the SQL to match your actual database schema. Awesome, great. Okay, so let's feed it back its own suggestion here. I do want to update the original message to uh, replace the button after marking it in progress with another button that says mark as done or complete or completed or whatever word I'm going to use. Let's say done. You know, this is an interesting point. I still find myself not wanting to bother AI. It's like, it's almost like I treat it as a human, like, oh, I don't want to ask too many questions. It'll get tired of me. And as long as you have enough money, it'll never get tired of you. So I, I really have to train myself to push, 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 push. It's not a human, it's a machine. Okay, let's scroll way back up here and let's see what it does. Okay, so first off, we've got mark in progress, awesome. 
it stores the messages timestamp. So it's added a table here, Slack messages. This is strikingly familiar to uh, another app that I've built before. So it adds a table for Slack messages here. We have mark in progress, same sort of thing. However, now after we've marked a stage in progress, we go back and try to find the message about that issue, about that stage. If we can find it, then we're going to update that with new content. So whenever you do this in Slack, it literally replaces the message that was there. So now I can update this and now the button can say mark is done. So if a user gets a notification that a stage is ready for them, they can say mark is in progress. As soon as they mark is in progress, they get a new state, a new message where they can now mark it as done. So it's adding the mark is done action in here. If it can do that, then it simply updates the message. No more actions, no more buttons here. Just some plain text to say it's now complete. Oh, it's even deleting the Slack message from the table, which is interesting. Uh, a little bit of error handling here. It's telling me about the new Slack messages table talking to me about the action. It's, oh my gosh, it's even giving me some to create the Slack messages table so I know the schema I would need. That's pretty impressive. So I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get to try out the artifacts feature, which is again, this right-hand side of Claude, which I've been seeing in videos. And I'm not sure why, I'm brand new to this. It's literally the first time I've ever used this. I'm gonna go Google this afterwards to see when artifacts show up, but this, is very impressive. I'm very impressed with Claude's abilities to code, reason about things that you did not provide. I did not provide any database schema. I didn't tell it I wanted to use the Slack Bolt framework. I really just said TypeScript, give me all the code. And this is a really great starting point. Is it production ready? Of course not. But it gives me more than a blank canvas. And a blank canvas can be really scary when you go to code something and you're trying to connect a bunch of pieces together, having a place to start is always very, very helpful. And I did this in, what was this, three prompts, four prompts? Not very many, very impressive. Now in ChatGPT's defense, I have not run these exact same commands through ChatGPT 4 or 4.0. It might be just as good, I don't know. That's an exercise to try, but I can say that Claude here is pretty impressive. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me on this little experiment. I do use ChatGPT all the time, so it's kind of fun to go try out another tool. And now I think I'm going to take this code and actually use it and turn it into an app. So I'll see you next time. Oh, hit the subscribe button if you liked it. Maybe the like button too. Okay, I'll see you next time.